are you just so tired of being on that little hamster wheel of trying to fix yourself or feeling like you've tried every self-help book, every self-help seminar, but you really don't see a lot of change in your life, then stay tuned to this episode. Welcome to Two Amigos Tuesday. We are so, so excited to talk to you today um, because we're going to be talking about the difference between self-help and self-love. And let me tell you, it is a doozy. We are going to have to break this puppy up in two episodes because it is so chock and block full of good stuff to help you out. So we just wanted to say thank you for joining in. Welcome to this episode. Welcome to everybody live and everybody who is going to be watching this on the replay. I just wanted to send out a big shout out to our sharer from last week. Nice shout out there to Deborah Crowley, honey. Thank you so much Woo! for sharing our episode last week. I heard a little birdie tell me that you are an excellent dancer, darling. So keep it up, girl. Keep it up. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to shout out, share this episode next week, okay? Share it with your friends. So we want to get to know you a little bit better today. Um, so this is our question for you. In what area do you want to grow in self-love? Hmm, think about that one and write it for us down there in the comments section. We like to share that. What area do you want to learn how to love yourself better? So today's episode, like I said, is about self-help versus self-love. We're going to do something really fun this month of July. Um, Katie is generously going to give away um, a draw. We're going to draw a name for in July for somebody to have a free session or at least a consultation with her in July. And so the draw is going to be on July. I'm checking here. I think July 24th, we're going to do the draw. Um, so if you want to be included into the draw, what you have to do is to share this episode on your Facebook and tag a friend that you think would love to hear this episode for them. That would really be encouragement to them. So that's going to be really fun. So please, uh, share this and tag a friend so that we can add you into the draw for the July the 24th. So I'm going to just introduce our guest for today. Um, you guys know her and love her already, I'm sure. But if this is your first episode, you're like, I don't know who this person is. Well, her name is Katie Close. She's my buddy, my friend, my amigo, numero dois. And uh, she has just got such an enormous heart. She, I, I'm calling her uh, a heart expert um, because she just, just genuinely is so loves people's heart. She has um, been on radio before. I mean, she's been doing some campaigns uh, for some senators. Am I right, congressmen? Senator, I don't know. I, you're, I hear your mouth. See your mouth moving. I don't hear nothing yet. You're still in my lobby, darling. So... <laughs> So, um, and she's currently, she lives in Florida, and she has three babies and a hobby. He's awesome. Um, and, yeah, she, but really what her heart is, um, is just she's really committed to seeing you become all that you are. So please put a warm hand clap together. You know those little Facebook hand clap things? For my friend, my amigo, Katie Close. Here she comes. Three, two, one. Go, baby. Hello. Hi. What's going on with you down there in Florida? Oh, I am just loving this heat. Thankfully, we've got some AC and some pools <laughs> to jump. Oh, my gosh. Katie has this amazing, like, outside netting thing. She sits under with a fan, and she sits out there and does Gazebo. her work. Oh, my gosh. That's it right. is it is the life. And the enjoy. crystal blue seas, right? Yes, we're right on the Gulf of Mexico. It's gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. So today, pretty pretty big topic that we're going to be uh, tackling, you know, talking about the difference between self-love and uh, self-fixing. So um, let me go. Let me jump in here with some questions. Okay. What are some of the um, damaging side effects to self-help? 
that's not like steeped in self-love. And what do you read from these side effects? All right, so we're gonna look at, like you said, not having the foundation of self-love mm -hmm. and what that's gonna do when we try to self-help or fix. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things is we're gonna have a nagging sense that we're not enough. Mm. It's like this underlying nagging. I need to figure out more. I need to be better, smarter, faster. I need to improve. And so it's not that that's wrong, but if it's not based on self-love, it's going to begin to eat away at our heart and soul instead of nourish our heart and soul. So that's right. one of the mm -hmm. effects. And then you're going to find something like fault finding mm. and you're constantly looking for problems. So you treat yourself with a problem identity, I'm mm -hmm. looking for a problem, I'm going to identify a problem versus I'm identifying my potential. Right, right. Right? Like, okay, problems are real. We don't want to ignore them. But like, yeah. we don't want to ignore our potential and our power right. and our possibilities either. And then the, uh, the other component is that we'll often lose sight of ourselves mm. because we're looking for a lot of external standards, ideas, techniques, and instead of being fueled from the inside, we're more fueled from the thoughts and the ideas of others. Right. So those are pretty heavy costs. Like we're not right. talking about, oh, you know, I, I get tired a little extra because I'm pushing myself a little harder. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about that because a, a good tired is a good tired. Yeah. But, you know, like there's definitely something to be said about growing and maturing. But if you're not doing it from your heart, you're doing it lopsided. It's almost like building a house on mm. a really shaky foundation. So what's going to happen is it's going to start looking great. Maybe you lose some weight or maybe you get a promotion, but it's not really coming from your core. And so the mm. things that are still eating away at your core are still eating away at your core. Right. And then maybe criticism or something challenging comes and those side effects will become much more evident. Yeah. So what, what, could I, can you unpack them a little bit more? Like, okay, I'm not enough. Like, what are some of the even deeper side effects that kind of come from having that? Like, do people, like, they're unable to do things that's in their heart to do? I mean, what is what did you find? What did you, what did you right. See? Well, one of it, it, it creates a dissonance between how we present ourselves because we really feel like it's important to let other people know we are enough. Right. We are competent. We can do this. But it creates a dissonance between that and our vulnerability and our sense and our progress of learning. So let's say mm -hmm. that you are really skilled at and just happen to be trained at one thing, but your heart is saying, I want to cultivate this new area of life and this new hobby or maybe even some relational and emotional skills. If we feel like we get into that and we're not good at it right away, if we take this focus, we're going to be really hard on ourselves and probably not stick with it or try to do it more for that image consciousness. Yeah. So we're going to lose the process. We're going to lose the moments. We're going to be looking for, I say, the, the magic, the miracle, or the millions. You know? And yeah. so that, we, we reserve our happiness until those times. Right. Again, really high cost because it's not enough, right? So not right. enough. Means I don't have enough money. I don't yeah. have enough time. Yeah. Uh, I don't look enough. I don't right. feel and I, I don't seem enough. I... I don't communicate enough. I don't have enough followers. Like it just bleeds into everything. And so then we actually seek out self-help to reaffirm how we're not enough. Wow. So do you think people know that's happening to them or does it hide itself somehow? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's just really normal mm -hmm. because we think that that's how we grow up. And I think our school systems inherently – give people a sense of um, standards to improve by, you know, a B is not really enough. Right. Now, some people take that maybe even more intensely than others, which I did. Yeah. <laughs> one of those great A. Yeah. So I know self-help and standards. I know. Yeah. And I loved it. You know, honestly, I loved self-help. It, it, in some ways it made me feel really powerful, but it really fed my performance without feeding my heart. So I'm not against feeding your performance, but at the expense of your heart, that's a no go for me now. Yeah. So, so you told me a little bit about that. Like you've, I, I can't remember exactly, but you've told me like you pretty much had straight A's from you were born. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. The 
when, when you a. Bless, slap her on the butt. Use, I got a straight A on Binky use. They were like, straight A. Wow. And how did you feel yeah. like, how did you, how did that affect you? Like, till you got to a point where you were like, wow, I have everything. Like I've gotten perfect everything, but something that felt missing to you or. Well, I, I think that really hit me in college because I, I was taking 17 credits, which is quite a bit for a first semester. I was on the crew team. I had made the varsity row team. I had a boyfriend attending West Point Military Academy, kind, good to me. And I was getting straight A's in all my college classes. And I had a scholarship. And it was like, the, and then I was a part of a bunch of clubs and took on leadership in the clubs, et cetera, et cetera. But from the exterior, like I was doing all the things that were intended to make my life great there was something missing and I didn't know what it was. And that feels really awkward. And it actually feels really scary. Um, a lot of times you'll find maybe a professional athlete who his whole goal in life, right. Was to get better, to improve his performance, mm, to be a professional right, athlete. And he's there. Right, right. But it becomes scary because we start to realize we missed all those moments to get here. And all here is, is a moment. Right. And we got a scholarship and we got an A and now what? Right. There's still that emptiness inside. And it's just a really human condition because mm -hmm. it's part of, like I said, the way we train ourselves. It's not bad. Again, right. certain venues really do operate on performance, but the heart and soul, relational, emotional health operate on something much more deep, meaningful. It requires a lot of presence. And that's something you could offer yourself with self-love. Mm -hmm. Right. And with that clarity, go ahead and be a rock star in whichever way you do. Right, you want to do it, yeah. And do you feel like you you still kind of, even through this whole process you've been through for two years, like it's something that you kind of still have to practice? You know, you still find that. And you're not like, we want to make that wrong. And I think I love that about, like, you talking about that part of your of who you are, is that you didn't make, you always used to make her wrong. But now you're learning to value, right, that side of yourself and also say, hey, but there's this other part that I'm trying to grow into. Yeah, well, one of the things that I really have loved is about working with parts of myself, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a part of me who loves to perform, who likes yeah. to win, who likes the A, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of rewarding to see your potential played out. But you can get caught up in the cycle of playing out a potential in only one arena, and lose out on other parts of yourself. Right. So now that I'm learning to incorporate all of that, self-love is a practice. It is mm -hmm. a constant doing and work. So yeah, I'm getting better at it. And it's fascinated me. It's been something that I want to get really good at. Because yeah. really, when I look at my life, you know, ultimately, I don't really want a report card on my gravesite. <laughs> Your life's Katie Close with yeah. the straight A's she got in college. I mean, <laughs> this is lovely. A little more endearing. Yeah, right? yeah. And so what I would love is something that maybe says some. She she really learned to love well, mm. and she really lived her own legacy. Mm. And to know yourself requires you to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, your true self isn't really going to show up. Why? So real. If you don't love yourself, your true self is not really going to show up. Why do you think? What is? Oh, why? Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, have you noticed how vulnerable you are to people who don't love you? Probably not too much. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, and that makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. You know, we're constantly evaluating because love is a practice. Love is powerful. And that's why this is a big topic, because a lot of people see self-love as something maybe a little mushy, gushy, indulgent, give yourself a pat on the back. Oh, you No, self-love is this practice of knowing yourself, learning to have self-trust, be able to be a person who has enough compassion and curiosity about yourself to care, to nurture and to relearn some skills when it comes to the way we relate to ourselves. And if you really get into that, you're going to start trusting yourself enough more and you're going to know more about yourself. A lot of people, they don't know what they want and I totally get it. They don't know where they want to go. And a lot of that is if they were really honest with themselves, they may even be self-critical before somebody else was critical. Right. 
And, and none of us like to be shot down, especially with things that are vulnerable or meaning to our heart. So I think that that's where the crux comes in. Like, you're not really going to know yourself. And right. if you don't really know yourself, it's hard to love yourself. Yeah. Like, I could love the straight A Katie, but there's a there was a, a Katie who, you know, didn't want to do her schoolwork and rather, you know, make some art or make no videos. What was it? Cooking videos that you wanted to make? Oh, as a kid? Yes. I used to yeah. love making cooking videos. <laughs> that was before. You know, all this video technology. Right, right yeah. So I just had to pretend with my You were he You were ahead of the crowd, girl. <laughs> I was like, I'm making meatballs. I was doing my little own YouTube do-it-yourself videos back when I was six. Yeah, totally. Too bad I didn't record those. I know. First on YouTube, right? Oh, we would have um, totally played it on here. That would have been excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, you are... Sorry, that Katie. Been, that, that would have been more of a heart expression that I could cultivate. And I just, you know, society standards, again, self-help will say, this is what you need to be. This is where you need to go. And we can get caught up in it in one way or the right. other. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, we are on with Katie Close. We are talking about the differences between uh, self-help and self-love. Um, and yeah, we, we are going to, um, I wanted to jump in a little bit more here on um, fault finding because you were saying that. You were, you were asking me, you know, do you show up fully as yourself around people who don't show you love? And, of course, that's a no. And so what you were trying to say is you want to do that for yourself either. So do you think you were saying that fanatical fault finding, you think that is something that if that is in you, you're not you're going to have a hard time showing up as the full you? Right. Well, and mm -hmm. if we slow this down, consider fanatical. Like, what do we get fanatical about? We get fanatical about things that have reward. Mm -hmm. So is there a reward of fault finding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because then we feel more in control. Oh, right. I know what it is. It's this. Oh, I know. I can fix this. Oh, I know this is, oh, I get it now. This is my problem. So we actually get fanatical about finding all the problems in us. Mm -hmm. And... It, again, finding problems is a great thing when we're resolving them and we're more focused on our potential, but we can get really problem focused on with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I had this whole scenario that I started watching play out, which was the, oh, wait, no, I've got to fix my problem. Oh. <laughs> my stay small. <laughs> that was a great way to stay small. Right? Because, oh no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to load that video yet because I can find all the problems. Mm. Oh wait, let me review this because I have some problems. You know, this is, there's right. some problems. Okay. So I'm procrastinating a great deal on the things that I really care about because, well, I can keep finding problems or I'm not going to show up in this relationship or I'm not really going to start that project. I, I'm not really going to do that art because I keep finding problems. Right. Uh, yeah. So we get really into it because one, we prevent ourselves from showing up, which feels safer, but mm -hmm. over the long course isn't. And two, we feel really, you know, in some ways powerful because we're finding all these problems that we're fixing, but we're not really fully activating our potential, which is really what, where the jam and the juice and the goodness right. is in, yeah. in life. Cause we're going to have problems. Yeah. <laughs> So you're saying a lot of like the pro like procrastination, um, despising yourself, the comparison game. You said um, feeling demoralized. That all comes from that's like a fruit of fanatical fault finding of yourself. Right. Sure. And and it has some interesting like s reward we find. You know, mm -hmm. like. Um, you know, what people say, I don't want to eat cookies, but they're still going to eat cookies. Why? Because they're full of serotonin. So mm -hmm. we might say, I don't want to find problems with myself. But yeah, you kind of do. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have any problems, then you don't have any excuses. And you don't have anything to fix. Mm -hmm. So that means you just have a life to live. Right. And that is actually more scary than fixing problems. Wow, Katie. Woo. So... Outward looking, loss of self. Like, how does that play out in people's lives, do you think? Outward looking. Well, I think, again, we lose a little bit of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're not really staying on track. One of the things I love to work with people on is alignment, mm -hmm. is really being on track with what's meaningful to them. Because a lot of things are meaningful. 
And so we'll hear one person or another say to be a better person citizen or to be important to our community or to really be a great wife or to be a good mom. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? And so we're going to get all this outward information about how to be better at something, which again can be useful, but can also take us off track. And then we're following that path, developing ourselves in a way that isn't really aligned with our heart. Right. So I did this when my first child was born. I read so many books about how to take <laughs> I <this> know. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was not really me. <laughs> you remember, you were around when I had baby. Oh, I, I, I'm i just thinking about how I was. I mean, I was oh, so okay. scared. I, was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, to do it right, which is right. not bad, but I lost a lot of moments with my baby. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it was about. And there's a lot of intuitiveness. There's some good insights, but there's a lot of variety. I mean, there's opinions from A to Z and back to A. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I really think that we, we can lose ourselves. And I'm a huge advocate of knowing yourself. You have something so unique and valuable. Right. So like I say, even with all my sessions, I'm always advocating for the true self to show up. But I don't try to push it mm -hmm. because there's got to be the love and the trust and the environment. Yeah. It's like a seed blossom. You know, you can't force a seed to, to sprout. Right. But you find you find the right environment. That's that seed is intended to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my husband, you know, is being very sassy. He says, <laughs> if only our children had also read the book before they were born. <laughs> <laughs> If only, William, that would have that would have really helped out, wouldn't it? Oh my yeah. lord! Aren't yeah, supposed to come out and and yes. fit right into our schedule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would really be very very convenient. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about one I don't want to talk about. How about that? <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> Listen, you want to stay tuned because we're going to. Um, do some sessions today. We're gonna to see what Katie's gonna to do to us. A little practice. We wanna go a little deep today, okay. Okay, can you talk about how the negative effect of self-help um, is where you can take your eyes off yourself and you're focusing it on other people because they have so, a similar issue. Or... Okay, so you mean like fixing somebody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, one, if we're going to be, treat ourselves like this, then we're going to inherently treat other people like this. So we actually may think we're doing somebody a real favor by giving them a bunch of advice and telling them <laughs> they're not enough. <laughs> I'd never do that. Oh, my goodness. I've Ever. had so many, so many counseling sessions where I've either been counseled or even in the past where I've counseled other people thinking, let me just help you right. by telling you on how to be successful like me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yikes. Slow that train down. But yeah. That's how I did, right? So if that's how I'm doing for me. That's how I'm going to do for you. And it really impedes relationship. It really does some wear and tear. And, of course, the person that I would love to practice on the most was my husband. <laughs> you know, of course. You just sit down and let me tell you how to be just like Okay, me. just a second. William, don't write anything in the comment section right now. Okay, please continue. Okay. Well, well, maybe William has the book on that, right? He, he can write a book. He just didn't even know how, how fortunate he was to marry me. All, all the advice of Lisa Marie, my wife, by William Van Dyke. And I have a halo and everything. I polish it. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we, that's how we relate to other people. And I don't know if you've ever sat with somebody who has given you a bunch of advice when you didn't want it. Yeah. But I can't really say that it endears your heart so much. Yeah. Well, most people are looking to be heard and looking to access the wisdom of their own heart. Mm -hmm. Granted, with some guidance, some expertise, you know, and that's what I've attempted to cultivate in understanding the heart, the emotions, even the way the brain and neurobiology works. You know, so that people have a framework and how relationships work. Like, how does that work? So that, like, you can kind of help get me on track, but I want to be on my own track. Right. And I don't want to 
you know, I don't want to have to follow you and just be your caboose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Give Listen. me my own engine. <laughs> William writes the following. Please don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't write anything hiding under couch. <laughs> Buddy, you better little... be hiding when I get home. Let me just say, <laughs> you are in some big trouble, Mesta. Woo! See, now we need to give him a little bit of advice about how not to hide. Right, right. don't this hide. Like, right? Take it like a man. Do you see no, how... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I am being a man. I'm being a smart man. <laughs> married for so many years oh um, my god you see how like anything somebody could say we can step in with some advice or here's your problem or right it's like oh my goodness yeah you know so so william you are enough brother you got you it are. you, you, got you it. hide under that couch and you keep that marriage working for you <laughs> <laughs> maureen says uh that might be me giving lisa advice convicted oh no your advice is always good maureen you are a good friend. No, this is really the reason why I don't. I it's hard for me to talk about this because I have. I think I've start learning this about people. Um, just being in community, um, probably oh my gosh, more than five years ago, starts. You know, you just kind of start noticing things, and I start seeing how people, especially on. It's very common on Facebook. A lot of memes um, that attack other people. But when you know the person, you know that uh, that's maybe something that they're also struggling with. You know, so we do do that. And I do that so much. And I have real, I, I, it's more like I notice it now that I start to try to fix other people because I can't fix that in me. So I feel out of control. And so I try to control that in someone else. Um, so I right, see it, working. but it's still really hard to like, just, I guess, calm down and, Treat your own heart nicely. <laughs> right. right. Well, well here's, this, this is our pattern. Our pattern was we learned to control, to suppress, to deny, to make wrong parts of us so that we could become more likable. Right. The challenge is we're going to be in a lot of different situations, and each situation is going to require a different kind of set of likability or set of skills or set of something. And, you know, in some ways I got to be really efficient, but when I'm with people, I got to be really – present and slow and patient you know so there's some approaches that i need to take in some areas of my life that i'm not going to take in others but if i'm trying to give my advice all over undefined and unclear and not really specified and again they're not that you can't give people advice but unwarranted advice or advice that maybe is a little preemptive because we think we've got this thing figured out we might not, maybe not for their situation, their specific area of interest, right. kind of how they're going, what track they're on. It takes a lot of patience to give somebody advice that's really fitting right? because we really have to know that person. And sometimes this person's coming to us with a problem that's not actually the real problem. Um, so they're baiting us a little bit on, oh, I've got this going on. Can you help me? Can you help me? What's really underneath of all that is I really don't feel attended to. I don't feel loved. I don't feel heard. And so we don't listen to that because it's kind of more hidden. And we jump in with advice on the present. It's called like a presenting problem. Like this is the problem I present. Uh, right, right. But if you're patient with me, you'll really know that it's something probably a little probably different deeper. or deeper. And so what so I really, it's a, it's yeah. It's a huge ordeal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I appreciate about your technique is that you really – I don't sit on the phone with you and you are like fix, trying to fix me. You're actually allowing my heart to talk to me. That's kind of like what you do. And it's very interesting that your heart actually knows what, how to fix the problem. And so, yes. yeah. So what, how would you, so if I feel I'm realizing that I'm trying to send that Mimi on Facebook about other people because I really am feeling something about myself. Um, what do I do in that moment to take care of my heart instead of that thing where we go out and try to fix the world around us? Okay. So one of my favorite techniques is to look at the judgment because we're trying to create distance or make something wrong so that we actually don't have to deal with it, incorporate it or understand it. 
if that's what it sounds like that's a little bit what you're talking about with the memes like oh make fun of distance that's something i don't like so what you actually need to do is realize that's a part of our humanity so when we've mentioned before in earlier episodes like anger sadness sometimes people love to give advice about how to not be angry not be sad not be happy 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 you know because right. those were things that made us uncomfortable so we kind of you know make people feel wrong about those hoping that they'll get out of them that doesn't necessarily tend to be the way the heart navigates. So we can give somebody a quick coping mechanism on maybe how to get through something, but to actually heal, you got to let the heart navigate. Right. So I would really look at, if you're seeing yourself do this in a relationship with somebody else, it's going to be a really good insight on you to slow down and look at the relationship with yourself. Right. So if I'm really trying to give advice, Oh, I call you want here. I'll give an example. I caught myself doing this the other day. So we'll, we'll just pull those husbands in. Those, those husbands of ours. Oh, man. Oh, man. You, got, you got chatty ladies. You chose yeah. us. That's what you got. <laughs> so, right. Right. So for Jason, <clears throat> I hear him saying something to the kids like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Blah, blah, blah. Kind of snappy, you know, just a little bit like irritated. We and love like, you, Jason. Oh, we love you, Jace. He's so good with his kids. But it was just, you know, you know we all have those moments. Yeah. So, but I overhear him and I'm thinking, oh no, he can't do. So in my mind, here I am giving him, he needs to be doing this and he needs to be slowing down doing this. And, and I'm like, I, I am being snappy at him in the same way he's being snappy, snappy at the kids. kids. Yeah. And I'm like, look here, I've got the whole solution. So just let me be snappy and stop <laughs> you from being snappy. And I'm like, this is not going to work. Yeah. So I had to be present with the part of my own heart that is irritated when things aren't set up and the kids don't know with clear intention where we're going and what we're up to. And Jason and I, we trade a lot because we're really a team. So, you know, part of that's on me. Maybe I need to set up clear communication for him and maybe, and I can see that in myself. And so it was like, you know, again, the problem wasn't let me be snappy to try to stop the other person from being snappy. Do you see how that problem Right, happens? yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's natural, right? We just yeah. kind of react. Mm -hmm. And we tend to be around people who, you know, we have some of the same patterns of. Right. So I, I realized, like, mm, we've really got to slow down and maybe even just start saying, complimenting each other more and writing schedules on our fridge so that we're not in situations regularly where – you know, the, the wire's tight and we're rushing and we've got us and the three kiddos and, and a work right. commitment and yeah. a friend in need or, you know, like that's, that's a lot. And it's going to make us be a little bit like. Snappy. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah the, I think, the heart knows, the heart yeah. knows to slow down and that snappiness doesn't fix snappiness. And just ask yourself some questions. You think like, Hey, what's going on right now? Why do you try to, why are you trying to fix someone else? Is there something Going yes. On in, and in so me. what goes on in what goes on in me is see I'm overhearing them while I'm working. So what's going on in me, if we're being really present here, really vulnerable, hi y'all. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, is me <laughs> I am uncomfortable with the fact that when I work, I'm not with the kids. And I'm a little protective of the kids. And you know, as a mom, I think that's a little bit natural, a little uncomfortable. You know, I'm working. He's with the kids, and, and I feel like I should be there. So I'm even more on alert to look for reasons why I should be there. Right, especially his mistakes. Oh, <laughs> perfect reasons. Back down. Perfect yeah. reasons that I, I'm a better parent than he is, right? And why? Not that I, you know, but then that gives me validity to say, you know, I need to be the one – on it and choosing yeah. and you know he's a great dad see the amazing thing is dads are really good at being dads yeah so um i'm i'm learning and growing but I, you know these are where you get more vulnerable with yourself and you go wow like i'm really creating some tension for myself around should i be with the kids can the kids handle a little bit of snappy you know like yeah. do i need to be in the middle of all their situations because their dad is actually really great with them in so many ways and gives them a lot of exposure to things, you know, sports and play and even just his personality and strengths that I wouldn't give them 
So I think I'm maybe overemphasizing the importance of me being there all the time and right. helping monitor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> monitor this. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share just real quick one for me, I guess it's one of the first ones I realized when I do this. Um, I have a very quick temper about disrespect like anything like that, I am angry right now. But I can be very disrespectful. And so I'm not at a place where I catch it very very well, but that's one thing. And I, that would start making me think, huh, that's really interesting. I get very annoyed with disrespectful people. Hmm, maybe because it's in me. You know what I mean? Like, wow, you know. So this is very interesting how, how we are wired. So guys, thank you for staying on with us here um, on to Amigo Tuesday. We are going to have a little bit of fun. Miss Katie, are you ready to do dive a little deeper? Yeah, so let's do an exercise. So if you're watching this, do it along with us because why not? Yes? Yes. Exactly. All right, lovely. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do, also, by the way, like Louisa Marie mentioned, we're going to, I'm going to do a free art of the heart for somebody. And that's a really great value because you get to jump in minimal commitment on you, right? You get to just give it a try. I'll be present with you and you'll get to see the experience of working with your own heart at a greater depth. And all my consultations right now are free because I really want people to get exposed to what's possible for them when they actually start to love themselves. And again, I think there's a lot of misconceptions around it. So I'm willing to give you that everyone that first consult free, but someone this wow. month will actually get, you know, a session that's really just a gift that says we, you know, I want to, I want to give back to people's hearts and I want to see people blossom because I like to see what's inside of them. It's really amazing. Yeah. Right, so one of the, one of the first steps is the process of self-love. And I just love this simple technique and it's out there in a couple different ways, but this is the way I like to use it. I like to watch someone and notice where they're making themselves wrong for being wrong upon being wrong. Like it's, it's an ingrained pattern of mentality. So I ask them to slow down and feel feelings are going to stop the logic from just cycling on the hamster wheel. And it's going to get you in touch with, what's real for you, how you're really processing something. So let's say there's something going on for me. Let's say the thing that would be most annoying me about myself right now. Oh, I, well, I had mentioned earlier that my, like my tiredness. I'm really annoyed that I'm more tired than I want to be because I want to be doing more than I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge for me, instead of first opting to find all these techniques on how to maximize my day and get more time in and push myself harder, slow that down and ensure that my foundation is that I'm doing it for myself because I love myself, not because I'm trying to present an outward image, I, I don't feel enough, or that I'm just trying to fix a problem because I can't be content with who I am, right? So we mentioned those three and then, of course, the way we treat other people. But this, this is going. I'm going to have those side effects if I don't check in first to ensure that I'm actually trying to accomplish more because I really love myself and not because I'm trying to fulfill all these other fanatical, you know, ways of trying to prove myself to others. So we're going to slow down. And I would say this is how I would do for myself. I would say even though, and I would really feel into this. Even, I've got fireworks going on here. I don't know if you. Like, I do you have like some. I have some here too. I, it's. I was like, <laughs> what is going on? My heart's like, yes, I love you. Explain. Oh no, wait, no, that's fireworks. Wait. No, <laughs> Different kind of fireworks. All right. So, I would say even though I accomplish far less than I I intend. I am willing to love myself unconditionally and accept myself completely. And I can tell right there, if you feel into that, for me, when I felt into that, I could, my, my, the corners of my mouth started to kind of go up as it, like a little smirk, like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Sounds really good, but it was like, no, 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 you don't. Right? 
because I'm still withholding. I'm withholding love from myself until I get this. I'm withholding affirmation. I'm withholding acceptance until I, I do more with my day. So then I'm going to try it again and notice, and I'm going to soften it a little bit. So I'm going to say, I'm willing to consider loving myself unconditionally and accepting myself completely. All right. So I'm going to say, even though I accomplish far less than I intend in a day, I am willing to consider loving myself unconditionally and accepting myself completely. Okay. So that was like, for me, I could feel it up in my cheeks and there was like a, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing is <laughs> I'm progressing. I'm progressing with a softening, like, because here's the deal. If I say, Oh, Katie, I love you. No matter what you do, I cannot believe me. You know, it's so easy to try to deceive ourselves. I don't know how many people will tell me I love myself so much. No, I get it. I know. I know God loves me. I know I love me. I know my husband loves me. And it's like, yeah, but if you knew that, you would actually operate differently. Right. And one way to test is if you get really still, whether or not there's this full sense of wholeheartedness and presence with yourself, or whether there's a, some level of frantic, Nick, un, franticness underlying all that. So that's a real easy, like, okay, you know what? It's really hard for me to actually just be present, accepting, and celebrate myself without these conditions that right. show up as soon as I try to do that. Right. So in this practice, you know, I soften and then what I could do, there's a couple different ways to go about it. And again, it really depends on how the heart wants to navigate this. And part of it might show up where I've developed this mindset. I might go back to where I kind of grabbed hold of why this wouldn't happen and why that's a critical moment is because my heart was vulnerable at some point and decided now nah, I need to accomplish more. And so re-altering that decision, it could be looking at the part of myself who's wanting to accomplish more, pushing to accomplish more, and being present with her, compassionate and curious, not making her wrong. Because as soon as I make her wrong, she shuts, like that part of me shuts down and it's just more defensive about, no, you need to accomplish more. There's a wholeness that we're going for where, yes, I can increase my capacity to accomplish things during a day. But I can also be okay with a day where things showed up and my accomplishments were really beneath my ideal. And that kind of love is going to carry me and a consistency to continue to work towards the accomplishments that are really meaningful for me and really rewarding for my heart and soul. And that's why I want to build on a good foundation is because that's what I want my life to be up to. And I'm in my, you know, 30s. I know it's hard to tell, but <laughs> late 30s. What? Uh, I know. You are but... beautiful. <laughs> no matter what they say. <laughs> oh, oh but... um, I appreciate that little serenade. Thank you, my friend. I'm so, welcome. But the, the point is, right, that I like, I'm coming to terms with, oh, like I don't get to do this thing forever. So if I'm on a track that's not genuine and authentic to me, that's probably going to matter. Yeah. Because I don't just keep getting to go around the track. Right. Like at some point the track ends. Yeah. Right. You know, so, and that's, and that's actually a good thing in the sense that we know we have this capacity to be impactful here on earth, mm -hmm. you know, and beyond that there's, right. there's different and, you know, hopefully grandiose and glorious things beyond that. That's what I'm yeah. planning on. Yeah. But on, the impact Ooh, here on this earth. Yeah, that's right. But the impact here on this earth is, is limited and it's intended to be that way so that we do refine who we are with a sense of urgency and priority. And that's where I tell people, like, I know you might want a couple fancy dinners and maybe new curtains, but you might want to invest that in your heart. You might want to slow down and really get clear for you and learn to love yourself enough that your true self shows up. So those are a couple different ways where you could take that simple exercise and just notice. And when you notice that you don't maybe love yourself fully, this isn't to be hard on yourself. Right. Like, oh, great. You don't love yourself. Dead. Oh, man. Ah, now I don't even love. Now I got to yeah. do something else. Where am I going to put that in my day? Yeah. <laughs> This is to simply 
go, well, 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 that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense that I'm striving. That makes sense that I'm a little more irritated than I need to be about this accomplishment stuff, you know, this list that I've got. You know, those make sense. Okay. Because what happens is if I say to you, Lisa, Lisa, I just love you unconditionally. But there's this breach of trust, there's uncertainty, and there's behaviors in you that are, are demonstrating that maybe that's not genuine. When I start to own up, you know what, Lisa, I love you when you're really performing for me. And when you're not, like, I kind of have this thing about you. You go, all right, I thought so. Yeah, <laughs> right. Now, now this whole relationship thing makes sense. And the other thing is just because I don't love myself fully unconditionally, it doesn't mean I don't love myself at all. Right. It just means my practice is not developed enough in order to invite a more and fuller expression of myself. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you're failing at love or not doing it right or, you know, it just means now it makes sense. Now it makes sense that I'm pushy with myself instead of inspired on some of my tasks. Right. Now it makes sense that I'm pushy on my husband when he doesn't do the dishes when I was on his to-do list, right? Like, oh, cause that's what I do with me. Of course, right. yeah. I was helping you. I was yeah. helping you get that done. You know, you know that, right? Just reminding you for the that's fifth right. time. Yeah. Oh, well, that's really cool. I, I love this stuff, guys. If you haven't, if you haven't realized, we can go on and on, but, Listen, I, I shared um, Katie's, um, let me see here. I shared with you um, the blog on um, hidden side effects of self-love. Um, and I also shared with you how to get on her email list to get her updates. Um, and so please go on there. And also please answer this question um, so we can get to know you better. In what um, area... I wrote in what? Oh, I wrote R. Oh, this bar. I'm not even gonna post that again. Spelling mistakes. I love you, Lisa. Even though, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even though you can't spell so well. <laughs> I don't think I believe me. Anyway, um, yeah. What area in your life would you like to grow in in self love? And put that in the comment. It doesn't have to be like your deepest darkest secret. Um, but we would love to just communicate with you and maybe just start a journey or just, you know, throw a few answers out there. It can help you with that. Um, but we're going to come to the end of this episode of Tu Amigo Tuesday. And uh, I think we're going to have to jump on this one again next week. There, there are a lot of things we didn't get into. Um, and so if that's okay with you, we can get um, back on here next Tuesday. Thank you, darling. Thank yes. you for showing up. 100% every time and doing this with me. I am so thrilled. I'm so thrilled that your heart is in love with your heart and it's growing in love, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect in love. Right. But we know when someone is making intention towards loving ourselves. So even just signing up for some sessions or just doing the practices or, you know, reading through the emails and doing a couple different moments, your, your heart's going, oh, wait a minute. She's right. starting to show up for Right. Yes. Yeah. And again, not to say that you can't get a lot of great tips and tools and techniques, but do it for you. Do it because you love yourself. Don't improve to love yourself. Right. right? Love yourself enough to improve in the ways that are meaningful. Don't try to improve so that you could love or like yourself because you're, right. you're way more gorgeous and glorious than that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us um, today. And yeah, please remember to share this with your friends um, and tag a friend who you think would um, really like to um, to hear about this. And we're going to do a draw on the 24th of July so that you can have a session with a mamacita over here. So we love you guys and stay true to your hearts. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Ciao.